Hey, what's up guys? Joel Adams with Iridesium and today we are going to be taking a look at how to make 3D models. This is part of a course I am calling the Blender 2.8 Pro Tips course and this is the first video. I just want to quickly go over how 3D models are made so that anybody just getting started with Blender and 3D can understand the process of 3D and what it takes to make a 3D model. So I've got a couple points I want to hit here. Um, the first thing I'd like to get out of the way is to explain what a 3D model is. A 3D model is just a 3D representation of an object in simulated space. So in Photoshop, you'd use your brushes to draw a person. The computer is giving you a simulation to approximate what it would be like to draw in real life. Um, 3D is exactly the same. You are going to be approximating how it would be to model or sculpt something in the real world. Um, so let's say you're going to make a model. The first thing you're going to want to do is concept art. One of the most important things you can do before going to town on whatever it is you want to model is create some concept art for yourself. If you can't draw, that's fine. Gathering reference images or using someone else's artwork is usually just as good. Sometimes even better because it will grant you a fresh eye. Blindly jumping into modeling is quite dangerous, especially for the inexperienced modeler. So take 10 minutes to draw something on a spare page in your notebook or in Photoshop or in Blender's 2D drawing platform. Blender has a pretty powerful 2D drawing section now, which I do suggest you go check out. It's a good place to make concept art. Once you are done with your concept art, the next step is to create a base mesh. A base mesh is a very simple, low resolution first version of whatever you intend to make. The main goal with this step is to get some simple geometry with the right proportions so you can begin adding detail. And that's basically it. Next, you're going to either sculpt or model. Sculpting versus modeling. When building a base mesh, you almost always use traditional polygonal editing because for most people, you have finer control over your mesh. However, once you are done making your base mesh, you must move on to add detail to your model. There are two major ways of adding this detail. Method one is sculpting. In this scenario, you use software that allows you to digitally sculpt your model using simulated brushes and tools to move, scrape, and warp your geometry into shape. Sculpting is typically used for organic forms such as people, rocks, um, or animals. In the second method, you will continue using polygonal editing to add the detail to your base mesh. This method is usually utilized for less organic and more precise or hard surface objects such as cars, buildings, and other typically man-made objects. If you are trying to make a car or something similar, you are probably best off going with traditional polygonal modeling because you need perfect curves and hard faces. Those precise shapes are going to be difficult, if not impossible, to sculpt. Often, when using polygonal modeling, you can trace blueprints which will allow you to skip the base mesh step completely. If you model a repeatable object, such as a light pole or train car, you can very easily instance the one model to easily increase the scale and detail of your scene. So on the other hand, let's say you decide to sculpt. If you are modeling an octopus, for instance, most likely you are going to want to sculpt because an octopus is a very fleshy, organic form. So you take your base mesh and you begin sculpting. What you want to do here is to sculpt a medium resolution version of your model. You just want to get the primary and secondary detail in, nothing like super small yet. After a while, you will get a shape you want and you are ready to move on. If you intend your sculpt to be textured or rigged, you need to retopologize it. This process is almost as tedious as rotoscoping, in my opinion. You must carefully trace your entire model with polygons to make sure the geometry is clean and ready to animate or texture. Once you have done this, you can add in the fine grain detail on top of your clean, retopologized model um, just by sculpting it in. So you'll add a modifier, 
and you will go into sculpt mode and sculpt the detail in that modifier. So it's not actually sculpted into the mesh, it's sculpted in a modifier that is distorting the mesh. Once you have retopologized and sculpted your model, you are ready to move on to the texturing process. First up in the texturing process is UV unwrapping. A usually necessary and sometimes very meticulous step you must take before applying textures or painting your model is UV unwrapping. UV unwrapping is the process of taking your 3D model and cutting it up into pieces that can be laid flat so that a 2D image texture can be applied to the surface. You're going to try to cut your model in places that will not be very evident, such as creases or sharp edges. This will ensure that if your textures are ever like pushed out of place a little bit, um, the seams will not be obvious. Texturing and shading are two of my favorite parts of making a 3D model. Once you have unwrapped your model, you are ready to texture it. Texturing is the process of applying a color or pattern to the surface of your model. This will not affect how your model scatters or reacts to light. That is all done in the shading process, which comes next. Next up is shading. If you are making something like a car, for instance, you can likely skip over the texturing process and come straight here. In the shading process, you are going to define all the physical properties of your model, such as how reflective it is, whether or not it scatters light beneath the surface, um, like skin, or what parts of it emit light. You could use the masks you painted during the texturing process um, to isolate certain areas so that some parts react with light differently. The possibilities during shading are practically endless. It's one of the most amazing processes um, in my opinion. So last is rigging and animating. This step is not always necessary and in some cases it is even unhelpful. For instance, you wouldn't rig or animate a cup. If you were making an octopus, rigging could be very handy to have though. What you will do is add bones to the inside of your mesh. Your mesh will then be assigned weights that will be attached to the bones. You can then move and animate the skeleton and the mesh will follow. And you are done. Congratulations, you are completely finished with a model. Some of those steps I mentioned are not always necessary and many of them can be bypassed or made significantly shorter once you get some experience. If you want to learn how to do this, you should download a piece of 3D software and learn how to use it. Because it is both free and quite powerful, I recommend you go to blender.org and download the 3D software Blender from that website. Blender is a very powerful tool and not just powerful for free software. Blender works really well even compared to the expensive paid software. Once you have it installed and ready to go, check out my Blender 2.8 Pro Tips course. The 2.8 Pro Tips course starts at level one, taking you through the basics, then it slowly works up in complexity, bringing you from complete beginner to a 3D artist ready to sell 3D models online, add visual effects to your short films, or even work for a studio. So that's basically it. That is how most 3D models are made. Like I said, a lot of the steps can be skipped in some situations, but for the most part, those are the things you're gonna be thinking about and doing when making a 3D model. That's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. This is Iridesium.